All right, guys, it is Saturday, April 10th, 2021. I got 18 days left to finish my 55. Still in the same condition it was, only a little bit worse off. So I haven't posted a video in a couple of days because I stopped working on the car. I threw the towel in, I was done. I didn't have just one little small issue to piss me off to happen. I had three, so I'll run you through those right now. So I'm, I've, you know, I had a couple days off of it from working on it all day long, day in, day out. So I'm gonna try and make another go at it today, but I probably won't be able to make the show with the car now because I've lost a couple of days. That's a lot of time. Now, if this does work, I'll, I'll still try to make a go at it, but I, keep in mind, I've got three issues and I'll run you through those right now. So my subscribers already know uh, some of you guys are going to remember I had a master cylinder issue. I had put a 7 8 master cylinder on the car and come to find out it was too small for my application. So I called the manufacturer and was telling the guy that my brake pedal is an inch off the floor when I hit the brake pedal. And uh, he said it was a volume issue. So he wanted to know, he said, I can't properly size your master cylinder until I know your piston caliper bore sizes. So I got his extension number, hung up, got that information, called him back. He recommended a 15 16 master cylinder, and he did say, because I was getting ready to ask him, I realize 7 8 to 15 16 doesn't seem like much, but it is on volume. And I was like, okay, cool. So hung up. I waited about a week or so. I don't even remember how long it was I waited before I ordered the new one, but before I did, I called the company back, and I got a different guy this time. And I told him, you know, what had been going down and talked to the guy, and I said, I have my piston caliper bore sizes wrote down here if you need it. I can't properly size your master cylinder until I know your pedal ratio. That's interesting. The other guy needed to know piston caliper bore sizes. So why you would not have information in your computer on a factory 55 Chevy brake pedal pedal ratio is beyond me. But I had to hang up, get that information and call back. There's two measurements you have to have. And if you need to know that, you can find out how to do it online. I'm not gonna run you through it. So anyway, I called him back, told him the pedal ratio, and he said, <clears throat> you can go with a 15 16 or a one inch, you're stuck kind of in between. And I said, okay, so if I go with a one inch, what issue could I have? That was the main thing I wanted to know. He said, you'd have a really firm brake pedal. And I said, what do you actually mean by a really firm brake pedal? And he goes, you'd have a really firm brake pedal, sir. That's the smart ass answer I got. So that pissed me off. So what I, I, I realize it's a cut and dry answer, but I wanted a little bit more out of it. Like if I touch that brake pedal, the brakes are gonna lock up, or when I hit the pedal, it's gonna be higher up, which is kind of what I wanted. You know, I didn't know because he, he didn't want to explain it anymore. Uh, he's just treating me like a dumbass. And I realize I probably am a dumbass, but anyway, so I hung up the phone and I went ahead and ordered the 15 16 <clears throat> and me and my wife out here, probably a good two, two and a half hours, you know, her working the brake pedal, me bleeding the brakes, and here we go. So this is the new 15 16 master cylinder. Inch off the floor, what do you know about that? How awesome is that? Fun fact, if you have air in your lines and you hit your brake pedal, it goes really, really low, and you let up, and go again and it gets a little firmer and let up and it goes a little bit firmer again that's air in your lines my pedal goes to the same spot every time which is a volume issue all my brake caliper bleeders are on the top everything is bled properly and the clevis on the master cylinder is adjusted until the pin slid in perfectly i didn't have to sit there and push on pull on the brake pedal forward or backward to get the pin in it i adjusted it out until that pin slid right in so i know that is adjusted properly so, anyway, I am manual brakes, by the way. I don't have a power booster, so I don't have the pin in there to worry about on the length of pin. This is all manual brakes. So, I was pissed off over that. $250 again on the second master cylinder, so that's 500 bucks in master cylinders. So anyway, I slept on it, I got up the next morning. Now I will say the brakes do work. Uh, I had her hold her foot on the brake and I tried to push the car and I couldn't move it, but in an emergency situation driving down the road, if I have to slam on the brakes, is it gonna stop? I don't know until I get the car running, but I don't like a pedal that goes an inch off the floor. That's kind of scary to me. So they may work and I may be able to get to the show, but 
I'm just gonna have to try it because I am not buying another master cylinder right now anyway so I decided that the next morning after the brake issue I would paint parts since I figured out my static cling issue if you didn't catch that video you need to watch the one that's in front of this one I've been having real bad static cling on my parts after wiping them down it's charging the parts and you can feel it it moves your arm hair and what's going on is it's the springtime here in Oklahoma we're getting pollen really really bad so you know that stuff's just it's in the air it's just gonna go to whatever I'm painting so the wind was really really super bad the next morning so I couldn't paint I didn't even want to try to paint because I would probably have to sand it all down or redo it again in a couple days so I decided to focus on the mechanical side of it so if you caught the video from a couple of months ago I filled up the front float bowl through the vent with fuel and I started the car and had it run just on the front float bowl and it started right up it idled just fine and I let it run until the old fuel run out of the float bowl so I went down and got distilled water and three gallons of 91 octane and I put the fuel in the tank it's the first time it's had fuel in the tank all brand new stuff so I topped off the radiator with straight distilled water because in case I have a leak I didn't want antifreeze getting in my carpet if my heater core is leaking. So right now it's just water so I can check everything, make sure everything's good. Then I'll drain some out and put antifreeze in. So I went ahead and tried to start the car and it did start up, but it was running really, really rough and black smoking out the back really bad. So I'm like, okay, what the hell? Spark plug wires off. So I check all the plug wires, they're all on. The next thing I tested was battery voltage at the alternator and at the battery to make sure the alternator's charging because I thought, well, hell, maybe the coil went out. The other thing, when you have a Holly style carburetor and it's doing that, it's probably your power valve. So I didn't think the power valve would probably be bad, but I went ahead and went down and spent 12 bucks on one, changed it out anyway to see if it fixed it, and it didn't fix it. So I'm sitting here messing with this carburetor, tuning on it, did the mixture screws with the vacuum gauge like I always do, check the float levels on these demons to check a float level it's a glass sight bowl on the side of the float there's three ribs right here you have set the float level to the middle one that's where your float level is supposed to be your mixture screws you basically turn them out until you get the highest reading on your vacuum gauge which is what I always do I always vacuum gauge my engines always timing was set but uh, anyway it's just I've never seen a car black smoking that bad at idle it was terrible it filled this whole garage with black smoke. It was making me sick. My eyes were watering. My carbon monoxide detector went off in my house and it's like 12 feet down the hallway right there. There's actually, this is my laundry room behind this door. Then there's another door, which I think it was open. But anyway, the carbon monoxide detector goes off in the house. That's how bad this thing was black smoking. So I'll show you this too, because I had the car out here under the carport. That is from the dropouts. Now it rained last night and a lot of that's gone. That was really, really thick last night. Now I did try revving it up a couple times to clean it out. It just didn't work. It just made it worse, basically. So anyway, I called. Oh, the other thing I did on these demons. This is a really neat uh, thing on these carburetors. I've had several of these in the past. If you take your uh, thread out th or your stud for your air cleaner out there's a flat blade screwdriver screw gun in there you can stick a flat blade screwdriver in there and turn that out a little bit like a half a turn and it'll allow a little bit more air to go through the engine and uh, if you have a big cam that will usually solve your rich idle condition i don't have a big cam in my opinion but here's the cam specs on the engine it's 467 467 222 degrees of duration Second time I've run that same exact part number cam. I have never had this issue before. So anyway, I decided at that point it was time to call the tech for this company. So I did that. If you've ever called that company, you could probably imagine how long I waited on hold. So he answers the phone and I told him what was going on. He said, your float level's not set right. I was standing right here looking straight at it. And I said, the float level's on the middle rib on that sight glass. Well, it's got to be your mixture screws. And I said, I've already set them with a vacuum gauge. He said, well, I'd reset both of them. Okay. He didn't ask me any cam specs. Didn't ask me what my battery voltage was. That'd be pretty, you know, specific things I would ask first. And the other thing that was happening, and this is a first for me. Never had this happen. 
And I always thought I was a badass on these Holley carburetors. I've worked on a bunch, especially for other people too. And I've never had this issue. This front vent tube right here, you have two vent tubes, rear and front. Every once in a while, while that car was sitting there idling, you'd see a fuel droplet spit out and land on the carb. A little drop, and then another one would come out and land on the carb, and then another one would come out and land on the engine. And it, when you were looking at it idling, it looked like vapor coming out of that front one. There wasn't nothing happening back here. So I held my finger above that and it left a wet mark on my finger. So there's misting fuel coming out of it. So I asked him what was causing that. He said, it's gotta be your float level or your mixture screws. Okay, so at that point, I hung up the phone. <clears throat> I turned all the uh, mixture screws all the way in one at a time with a vacuum gauge and reset them all again. I didn't check the floats again because they're in the middle where they're supposed to be. In my opinion, they're set. So anyway, by this time, I might want to say I actually missed a really good part that I was already pissed off over. When I first started the car and had it running, it was running rough. When I come out here and looked under the car, there's water under the engine. Freeze plugs were leaking in the block. So I'm really upset at that point. I actually stopped at that point. I was done for a couple hours. I decided that I would go ahead and try to put heat in the engine and, and see if it'll, they'll seal up because I have heard of brass freeze plugs sealing up after the engine gets heat cycled. So I can tell you for a fact that after messing with that carburetor uh, and when that engine finally got up to temp and the electric fan kicked on, uh, I didn't have any more leaks. So apparently they do seal themselves up, but I still have that worry in the back of my mind because otherwise that engine needs to come out and the freeze plugs need to be changed, which at this point I'm kind of willing to let willing to try it but uh i've talked to a couple of buddies about that and they did agree that yeah once they you know heat cycle they do seal and they're good to go so hopefully good to go i'm not going to try any additives in that engine don't believe in that stuff i don't like running that type of crap because i got a really expensive aluminum radiator brand new heater core and i don't want to jack something up now would be the time to pull that engine because i don't have any front end sheet metal on it you know but Anyway, while that car was sitting there idling, and about the time the fan comes on, you know, I know that engine's up to its operating temperature. It starts popping out the exhaust sitting there idling. Pop, pop. So the plugs are fouled. So I shut it off, and at that point I was done. I pulled a spark plug out. This is what they look like. They're toasted black. I have never, ever seen an engine on idle fuel foul before that, about the time the engine comes up to temp. I've never seen them foul plugs that quick, ever. That's kind of a new one on me. That is a 650 CFM carburetor on a 350. That, if you calculated that at their website, that is the proper carburetor for that engine. I've run 750s on 350s before and they just run a little fat at idle. This is a 650 and it's running fat at idle. And I've had almost the same combination on another 350 with the same carburetor and I didn't have this issue. So. I pretty much quit that day and I got to thinking uh, I come out yesterday morning I decided that when I did this car when I had it running it was on car ramps I have two different I have a mix match set of car ramps I have two tall steel ones and I have two short plastic ones and if I remember right the, the tall ones were at the front so the engine was level the car's not all together yet it's about an inch higher in the rear than it is the front so my thought is this carburetor, you can see it if you've been down to look, that carburetor is at an angle. So it makes me think even if that float bowl level is set in the middle, maybe it's still too high and it's getting in that jet plate and just going right through the engine. They will do that if the float level is too high. So I will say I don't have any fuel blowing out of the vent tube or pouring out of the boosters. Don't have any of that. The, float, the needle's not stuck. The float level stays in the middle so I know the needle and seat's working. So I lowered the float level yesterday and uh, I pulled all the spark plugs out and I have not started it since. I did go get new spark plugs and I haven't put them in yet, but I called a buddy of mine, Jason, who he's, he's big time into drag racing, messes with a lot of big carburetors, the dominators and stuff. He's probably no stranger to something running rich at idle. So I called him and asked him about it. And uh, he said the same thing. I would lower the float level and I said, well, I did that because I told him it was setting up higher in the back now. So anyway, he actually texted me this morning and asked me if I'd, you know, tried it, and I didn't because I was mad. But anyway, guys, that's that's a problem I've ran into with this thing. It's 
you know, pretty much three problems. I can't believe the freeze plugs sealed themselves up after getting hot. That's, I've never personally had it, had it happen. And, and I, I've been putting my own freeze plugs in small blocks for years because it's cheaper when you have your machine work done. If you do your galley plugs and freeze plugs yourself, it's a little bit off and that's, I've always done them. First time I've ever had one leak. In this case, it was three of them. So in my eyes, you know, at that time, I thought I had to pull the engine and uh, I was done at that point because that's a lot of work. Trying to be careful pulling out everything. It's all painted and detailed and everything, but that is why I haven't posted any videos. Now, I am pretty refreshed today. I'm not as pissed off as I was. And uh, I've got the plugs here. I'm gonna get my NICs out, get them on there and put in them heads. And I'm gonna fill that front float bowl up and I'm gonna try it again. So if I post another video this evening, it's because I got the fuel foul issue lined out. Uh, but if I don't post another video, I'm probably done. And at this point, 18 days left, may not make it. Not gonna stop. If I get the carb lined out, I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna have to work more hours. That's all it is to it. So that is what's going on in case anybody's wondering. But anyway, if I get it running and it's not black smoking like it was, I'll put the GoPro in the car somehow and I'll drive to the end of my, right down here at the end of my driveway and then back it back up. At least y'all can go for a little cruise there, but I kind of want to get it rolling under its own power and give it a little bit of throttle and then smash the brakes. I kind of want to see what happens there, but anyway, guys, that is pretty much it. I'm going to get to work. I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching.